So how does patience look? A real life example, how does it look? So I want to give you the example of Um Salama. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you two examples. One of how you should be and one how you should not be. And both of them are from the, com the, the female companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll start with Um Salama. Um Salama and her husband Abu Salama were some of the very first people to enter Islam in Mecca. They had the privilege of migrating to Abyssinia. So they made the first hijra to Abyssinia. And then they came back because the, the, word, the word was that the persecution had stopped in Mecca. So they came back and then they realized it was actually worse. So they set out to make the second hijra to Medina, Yathrib. As they were leaving, Abu Salama and Um Salama, as they were leaving, the tribe of Um Salama stopped them. They are on the outskirts of town. The tribe finds out about it. They stop them and they say, you can do whatever you want, Abu Salama, but she belongs to us. You can go if you like, but she's not going with you. This is his wife. And they have a newborn baby. So they held her. The tribe of Abu Salama heard about that and they went to go and get the baby. And they told her, this baby belongs to us because it's from Abu Salama. Do with her what you like, but the baby is ours. So Um Salama, in one day, she lost her husband and she lost her baby. And for one year, she would go to that spot in Mecca and weep. She would cry. Finally, someone said to Abu Salama's tribe, let's give her back her baby. And then her tribe said, let's let her go. She's miserable, she's depressed. So after one year, she got her baby back and she got permission to leave. So she left on a camel by herself, by herself. As she left Mecca, a noble man, his name was Uthman, not Uthman ibn al-Afan, but a different man named Uthman. He asked her, where was she going? She said, I'm going to Medina. He said, don't travel by yourself. She said, I don't, I don't want to go back to Mecca. I don't know what's going to happen. So he said, I'll, I'll be with you. And he was noble. Even though he wasn't Muslim, he was noble. And he protected her all the way to Medina. And then when he got to the outskirts of Medina, he said, your husband's over there. So they were reunited. Alhamdulillah. They had three more children. And then Abu Salama was wounded during the battle of Uhud. And he ended up dying from that wound. She remembered a dua that Abu Salama said that he heard from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he would say, whenever he was afflicted with some type of tribulation, he would say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And then, and then he would say, Oh my Lord, give me in return something better than it, which only you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, can give. So she said that when Abu Salama died, she said that. But in the back of her mind, she said to herself, How can I get something better than Abu Salama? So after her idda period, her waiting period passed, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq asked for her hand. She said no. Umar ibn al-Khattab asked for her hand. She said no. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked for her hand. But before she accepted, she said, she sent a message to him and she said, Ya Rasulullah, I have three characteristics that I'm worried about. Number one, I'm a jealous woman. And I'm afraid that I may say something because of your other wives that will put me in trouble with Allah. Number two, I'm advanced in age. She was only 31, but she said, I'm advanced in age. And number three, I have a young family. And the Rasulullah said, as for your jealousy, I will pray to Allah to remove it from you. As for your old age, I have the same problem as you. And as for your children, your children become my children. 
So because of her patience and because of her consistency and because of her dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her one of the Um al-Mu'mineen, one of the mothers of the believers.